We have a girl on a water slide, so I'm going to draw a water slide, okay? And let's add some water at the end here. And this person is on this water slide. And then there is a spring at the very beginning here that will sort of um, shoot her down this water slide. And this water slide, of course, since it has water, we're going to assume that it is a frictionless track that takes the person on a glider from a horizon horizontal section of the um, water slide down to ground level. So the total mass of the girl and the glider is about, we're gonna say 200 kilograms. And they travel through a height of h equals 35 meters and because we have a spring we're going to say that the initial compression of the spring is five meters and the uh, constant the spring constant is 3.2 times 10 to the third newtons per meter and after it reaches ground level along the track we're going to have a coefficient of kinetic friction equal to 0 0.8. All right, so we want to know after the girl reaches ground level, how long, how far along the ground will she slip and move until she comes to a stop? And we're going to call this distance length L that we're looking for. Okay. So before we start plugging and chugging, we need to examine all the forces and then determine what the system of our problem should be so that we can decide what equation to write. So we need to decide like whether we have an isolated system or a system that has an external force working on it. So if we think about all the forces acting on the glider, we have a normal force from the water slide and we have the force of gravity. And then at the beginning, we also have the spring force. Okay, so let's go through each and every single one of them. The normal force from the track doesn't do work because it's perpendicular. So in that case, it does no work and has no effect on the glider. And the gravitational force, however, does do work on the glider because the force is conservative. We can associate some sort of potential energy with this, and obviously we will associate the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, which you'll represent with UG. And then the spring force also does work on the glider and the girl by transferring some energy from elastic potential energy to the kinetic energy of the glider. And this means that it will apply some force and do some work on the glider. And at the end, when we have some friction over here, the friction is going to do some work uh, and increase the thermal energies. So let's take the system to contain all the interacting bodies, including the girl, including the water slide, the spring, the earth, and the wall that the spring pushes against. Now, because all the force interactions are inside the system, the system can be considered isolated, and so the total mechanical energy cannot change. So the equation that we should use is a conservation of mechanical energy. So we can have the E final equals E initial. However, we do have some change in thermal energy because of the friction at the end. Okay. So now that we have our equation, we can try to find the distance L. We have two types of potential energy in this problem. We have the elastic potential energy, which we'll represent with UE, and this is equal to 1 half kx squared, and then UG, which equals just mgy for the gravitational potential energy. And let us say that the uh, ground level over here, where y equals 0, this will be our reference level. So this means that the girl was initially a high h above ground level, and finally it goes to a height of 
h or y equals zero. And with the initial state, we can write the initial mechanical energy. So this gives us that E naught equals the initial kinetic energy plus the initial spring potential energy plus the initial gravitational potential energy. And since the girl was initially at rest, we get zero kinetic energy plus one half kd squared plus mgh. So that is our initial mechanical energy. Now doing the same thing for the final mechanical energy, we get k final plus spring potential final plus gravitational final. And all of these are equal to zero. So what this tells us is that that means that for the initial uh, mechanical energy to become zero by the end, this means that the delta E thermal must be equal to E initial. Okay, so now we can go and move on to the change in thermal energy, and we can use the equation for work to see that the change in thermal energy is just equal to the work done by friction, and that is equal to the force of friction times L. And we can substitute the force of friction with the coefficient of friction times the normal force and multiply that by L. And of course, we know that the normal force is equal to mg because it is not accelerating anywhere in the y direction. So we can rewrite that again as mu kmg times L. Okay. So now that we have both of these expressions ready, we can plug them back into the initial equation. And we see that mu kmgl equals 1 half kd squared plus mgh. And this tells us that L equals kd squared over 2 mu kmg plus h over mu k just do some rearranging and you'll get the um, expression for L. And we can plug everything in. I will erase everything so we can plug everything into here. Okay, so let's move this section up here so we can plug everything easily. So now we have this, and after plugging everything in, we know that this is 3.2 times 10 to the third newtons per meter. The uh, distance of the spring compression is five meters. So we square that. We divide by the coefficient of friction, which was 0 0.8. The mass was 200 kilograms. And of course we have 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the height was originally 35 meters. And again, we get the coefficient of kinetic uh, friction. And we get 69.3 meters. So this means that after the girl has arrived at the ground level, she will travel a distance of 69.3 meters until friction brings her to a stop. I hope you've learned something new and I hope to see you guys in the next video where we'll be going more in depth into potential energy.